Welcome to a little bit of Lakers. <laughs> so this is our farm stand. Um, well, that isn't. This is our farm stand, which was a uh, you know early quarantine project that we decided to put together. We built it out of just wood that we had laying around, and it was a family project. Everybody helped build it, helped paint it. We learned a lot. Um, so we've got this homemade cash box, which Peyton and um, the kids Mainly it was for Peyton at first for his eggs. Um, so his great-grandfather built that for him, his pop. And this here, this is a milk can that actually came from my grandfather's old farm on my side of the family. So my mom painted it up and added the little bit of Lakers on the front of there put out by the farm stand. So we have something meaningful out here from both sides of the family with the paint can and then our homemade cash box for Pete's poultry. So this here, this flag here, Pete just got for Christmas to put out at this stand. Um, the ground's frozen though, so we put it in a hay bale. <laughs> the uh, flag holder. Happy New Year! Um, so we got a couple of projects that we've had going on here and uh, we thought we'd share with you. So we had in the barn here, we had before two stalls um, that we had used for the pigs and then the goats. Um, we're actually going to be getting um, in the next week two pregnant sows and then three piglets as well. So um, we wanted to expand. We added another um, stall into here. So Bridget's in there right now, so I'll show you guys. <laughs> so coming into the barn, um, this is the stall that we're gonna, we, we just constructed this one here. We just added this in. Um, there's Bridget. Hi, Bridget. She's a cat that we got from the Humane Society. Um, and she's loving her life as a barn cat, <laughs> her and Romeo. <laughs> They wander all the time. They seem quite happy. Um, so the this here will be for the three little piglets that we're going to get. Um, right now we just got some extra hay in there. And then, oh, look! That's Carter over there peeking at me. I don't know if you can see him. Um, yep, and then we have our other two stalls. This one, normally um, the cows come in here. So hey, Carter boy. What are you doing, buddy? You want some peppermint treats? You do? Okay, we can get you peppermint treats. I'll get them, I'll come around. These are the donks, peppermint treats. Oh, hi, hi Romeo. <laughs> uh, they think that these are like the best things ever. Hi, Roms. Hey, buddy. So, we will go ahead and give get them some of those. Hello boys. Is it time for a treat? Hi Jose. Hi Carter. You need a peppermint treat. Huh? These are their little peppermint treats. You need one? Oh yes. Hi Jose. You need one too? Definitely. Huh? Yum yums. Hi boys. Are you guys jealous? You want treats? You are? How about you, Carlos? You want a treat? I get you a treat. Hi, guys. I know. I'll get you another one. I know. They're lining up for snack time. So this past year we, we changed over to round bales. Um, we still do get some small square bales to bed them with, but the round bales seem to work out pretty good. I can go with my trailer, I can go and I can get three round bales at a time. So that works out for us and that lasts about two weeks. As you can see, we've got the donkeys and the goats and the, the, the cows all eating, off the, all eating off the round bale together and they all coexist just fine. Um, we leave the round bales sitting on their round side because it takes them longer to pull it apart because if you sit them on the flat side they kind of just pull it all down and lay in it and 
walk in it and poop in it. So we leave it on the flat or on the round side because it takes them a little longer to eat it. Um, we don't have a round bale feeder yet, but hopefully that'll be coming in 2021. That would be nice. Um, we kind of figure one of these round bales, this is a four by four round bale. You can get four by five round bales, but this is a four by four round bale. Uh, it weighs about 600 pounds. Um, I'm guessing it equals about 12, about 12 small square bales, maybe 14 small square bales is what one of these round bales equals. But we like it, it's, it's fairly easy. We can kind of roll them around between a few of us around here and um, it saves us from, you know, um, feeding small squares multiple times a day and it just pr makes a little bit less work and, and we can feed them a little bit more at a time and they get the amount that they want. All right, so Avi, what is your favorite part of the farm? I like the goats because we get to breed them and they're just, they really get attached to you and they're really fluffy and cute and uh, the La Manchas would be my favorite breed of them because they're cute without the ears. What's your favorite part of the farm? The goats and cows and donkeys. Why? Because they're sweet and you and they, they, you can take them on walks, pet them, and they, they don't care. Abby, what's your favorite part of the farm? Goats and cows. Why? Because I get to snuggle them a lot. What's your favorite part of the farm? Um. Doing uh, chores every day and spending time with the animals. A couple questions come in um, through email about our roosters. If we had any, um, what their names were, what kinds we had. So. This is Joe the Bardock Rooster. He's about eight months old and he's pretty friendly. Uh, he was born on Valentine's Day 2020. We hatched him ourselves out of our pure, he's purebred cream liquor. Hi guys, so this is Pete. This is our, our French black copper Moran rooster. Pete's getting a little older, but he is definitely our most friendly rooster on the farm. The French black copper Moran lays the darkest colored egg of any chicken in the world. So this is Rico. This is our silver duckwing, Old English game bantam rooster. Uh, bantams are a small chicken. They lay an egg about the size, probably smaller than a golf ball. Um, but Rico is the smallest rooster we have on the farm, and he is the most feisty. He's the boss. Um, see the cool colors on his wings? Hey guys, so today we're going to be making some nesting boxes for our chickens out of Tidy Cats containers. So if you're looking for a cheaper alternative um, to construct nesting boxes than the rather expensive metal um, nesting boxes that you can buy online, um, all you need to do is ask some of your neighbors if you can have their Tidy Cats containers when they are done with them. So what you need to look for are the yellow Tidy Cat containers with the lids that are split like this. Uh, these make perfect nesting boxes. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to take the lid and you're just going to cut this portion off of the lid, saving this portion. And eventually they should probably just pop right off. And, uh, and this is what you're left with right here. A nesting box with this little portion of the lid right here that will keep all of the sawdust in. Okay guys, so right now we're basically just making a support for our Tidy Cats containers. Um, when you do this, um, basically we're going to take a board for the Tidy Cat container to sit on and we're going to zip it to that 
and then we're also going to screw it to the wall in the back of the tidy cats container. Uh, but when you're doing this, you're going to want to make sure you leave enough room on your support for a board for them to stand on in order to get in the tidy cats container because otherwise they won't be able to get in the container. Okay, so now I'm going to install my tidy cats container on the support. Um, I'm just going to set it on there and put a couple screws in and hold them on. Okay guys, so once you have the nesting boxes on, on your supports, um, just fill them with some shavings and your chickens will love them.